Josh, Mareko, congratulations. Both of you made signature blades that have propelled you into the third round of competition, giving you a chance at the title of Forged and Fire champion and another shot at that $10,000. Well, now we're gonna send you back to your home forges to recreate an iconic blade from history. And that weapon is... The Ida. Awesome. The Ida is a long cutting sword, most commonly used by the Yoruba people of West Africa. Their idolization of Ogun, the god of metal and war, led their blacksmiths to be among the most skilled in West Africa. With its leaf-shaped blade that could be single or double-edged, the Ida was a practical tool for both agriculture and hunting, as well as a deadly weapon on the battlefield. In combat, it was often laced with pepper or poison to paralyze enemies and ensure that the slash of the Ida left many dead in its wake. The length of the blade must be between 22 and 26 inches. Additionally, it must have a double edge. I've never heard of this weapon before. I mean, I've seen weapons that are similar, but um, I'm, I'm not really a weapons expert, so if I come away with a win, it's not gonna be a cheap win. I might make a great blade and get beat. You know, I did last time. You will have five days at your home forge to complete this challenge. At the end of those five days, you will return and present your finished items to the panel of judges. I'm really proud that I've been able to make it to the final round again. I feel like I have what it takes to win this competition, and I also really want to win for Doug. It's down to just Doug and Jason's picks. Don't let them down. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Good luck. Let's do this. Today's day one. I'm back home. It's a couple below zero this morning. It's time to get to work. Just gonna stack up a billet of Damascus here. This is gonna be my river going down the center of the blade, alternating layers of steel. I'm gonna be doing a really complicated Damascus blade with a lot of welds and a lot of chances for error. I was on the show last season, and I was absolutely happy and proud of the core sword when I built it, and I still am. Just didn't win. This is a bit of a shot at redemption for me. That thing's ready to twist. I'm twisting this metal to give it a really cool pattern along the edge of this sword. The twisting is a very intense process, and you're just really watching that steel close, making sure you're not shearing it in half. I'm going to call that good. I don't want to push my luck. Back at my home forge, the challenge is to build an Ida sword. My plan is to make kind of a mosaic steel, which is aesthetically really beautiful. And into the forge, and the great wide yonder. I'm gonna do a full integral blade, which means the blade, the guard, and the full tang in the handle are all gonna be forged out of the same piece of steel. The biggest concern is that the welds might not take, so I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed, keep my cool, and just do things the way I normally do, and should come out just fine. Like I'm forging in fire or something. See what I did there? It's day three, my blade's ground, I'm ready to heat treat. I'm feeling pretty anxious. Two days of work comes down to this. You just never know what's going to happen when you actually go into that oil. Here goes nothing. OK. Baby looks as straight as an arrow. This test piece that I heat treated with my sword, uh, I'm going to beat up a little antler with it and see how it does. That one took a chunk out there. I ended up with two chunks in the end that were missing, but I don't feel like I have time to play with right now, but I think I'll be fine. It's pretty damn cold in here, so I use my little hobo fire, an old turkey fryer. What's most important is getting a good heat treat on the blade. So I just need to bring it up all to an even temperature. Pull it out and give her a quench. All right, that should be plenty. Still looks pretty dang straight. Woohoo! I actually feel a little bit ahead of where I thought I was going to be today. My integral guard area is in there. I got my full tang. So the rest of it, pretty much from this point on, is grinding. It's time to start a handle. The handle's what cost me the competition last year. I'm going to choose this African blackwood. This sword is from West Africa, so I'm trying to keep it somewhat authentic. 
I fight this battle between staying historically correct and making something that the judges can hang on to. It's looking good. I want the look to be a bit of my own. Sword blade is real Ida, and the handle is real Josh. What the well, There's a hole in the wood. What the The frickin' well, there's a hole in the wood. Right in the middle of the block. Usually when you see a little pinhole like that pop up and you keep grinding, it just gets bigger and bigger and you've ruined the handle. I actually think I might be able to file through it tomorrow if I have time. Today was a pretty wearing day, but in the end, I've got a sword with a handle on it. I'm pretty comfortable with where I'm at. In the home stretch, I just have some light finish work to touch back up on the blade before I etch it, and then reattach the handle, and then sharpen the thing. Feels like it's got a little bit of a toothy edge. It'll definitely cut. I feel really good about what I was able to accomplish. The question is whether or not it's actually going to survive. There's only one way to find out, and that's to let Doug play with it. <laughs> this is a kill test. To see how lethal your weapons are, I will take your weapons and deliver multiple slashes and hacks on these ballistic dummies. Josh, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Those ballistics dummies are pretty tough. They're a hard thing to lacerate. So this test makes me a little bit nervous. OK, Josh, this is a wicked blade. On the initial hack right here, the blade went all the way through into the ribs and broke those ribs. The other side, same thing. That would disembowel this dummy. Your weapon will kill. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very much. Mareko, you're next. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. I don't know how well my weapon's actually going to perform because it has kind of a beefier edge geometry, which doesn't necessarily lend it to slicing very well. Well, Mareko, it is sharp. As you can see what it did, it lacerated right in all the way to the chest cavity, breaking the ribs that are in there. On the horizontal slashes, same thing, it lacerated deep. Feels good, balances out, and your blade will kill. Good job. Thank you. Next up is the sharpness test. To test your double-edged sword, I will take your weapon and deliver three slashes per blade across this web of ropes. If your Ida is sharp, it should meet no resistance. Josh, you're up first. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. I'll tell you, Josh, this is definitely sharp. It met no resistance cutting through the ropes. It feels good in the hand. Your sword, sir, will cut. Good job. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, Mareko, you ready? Bring it on. Let's do this. Well, Mareko, your blade is fast. It's light. It did lacerate through some of the ropes, and some of them it didn't. Overall, though, your blade will cut. Thanks, Doug. Next up is the strength test. Dave? Gentlemen, to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'm going to chop into these femur bones three times. Now, the point of this test is not to see how many bones I can break, but to see how well your blades hold up through that punishment. Josh, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Damn. 
everything stayed straight, everything stayed tight, but you can see we've got some extreme chipping on that blade. Did sizable damage to what we were swinging at, but you can just see those, those chips. All right, Mareko, you ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> I did my best to make the geometry so it could withstand this kind of use, but seeing the damage that happened to Josh's sword makes my heart like sink down to my stomach. Well, Mareko, you did pick up that slight bend, but your edges are beautiful. They've held up quite nicely. Nicely done. Thanks. Josh, Mareko, it was definitely a battle. There can only be one champion. The judges pick Forged and Fire champion is Mareko. Congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Good job. Wow. Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Josh, please surrender your weapon. I feel they made the right decision. I may not be the Forged and Fire champion, but I'm still a great bladesmith and a better dad. But I showed my kids that you step up and you do it again and you give it your best, and I think I did that, and I brought a beautiful sword. Looks nice, but uh, looks don't cut. Mareko, how does it feel rising to the top, earning a check for $10,000, and being the judge's pick Forged and Fire champion? Yeah, it's definitely been a serious challenge, but uh, to be able to represent for Doug, a man who I respect very much, and to make it to the end and win, uh, that makes me really proud. I came so close to winning last time. It feels really good that I was actually able to pull out the win this time. Winning the $10,000, it's gonna be so helpful for myself and my family. Doug, your horse won the race. I hope that I made you proud. So thanks for bringing me back, man.